Hello everyone and welcome to another live stream here. We're going to talk to bit today about uh, about the uh, flyman to the moon and the circle of fists. Um, so our, our uh, topic of the day uh, will have to do with uh, theory and fingerboard kind of knowledge. So that's going to be the uh, thing today. So I'm also making this a part of a podcast series. Uh, so you can check out the audio only if you like your uh, podcast. So uh, start out by doing a little of playing. And uh, as we go through, let's uh, think about the um, circle of fifths on this. So we're listening for a general root movement um, that has to do with that sort of sound. And we talked a little bit about this um, in a not so distant past here. So I'll start out by doing a little playing here. So um, yeah, so the circle of fists, I hope that you kind of hear a little bit of how that is sounding. So um, as we work through, we have this root movement. So let's say we start on the A, okay. So that's the root of the A minor there. So A, D minor, G, C. Okay, that goes from a major chord to a dominant. And then we have F. Now, circle of fifths, if you strictly go circle of fifths, you would go to B flat, E flat, A flat, so on. But we're staying diatonic, so we have, have a uh, flat five there. So we have a tritone at that moment. So if you stay strictly in the key and you do the circle, go through the circle of fifths, and at some point you're going to have this uh, interval of a, um, a diminished fifth or an augmented fourth. So here that explains that. And then 
E A K A minor, and then it goes to dominant, and then D G and then C, and then well, there are the first and second endings are slightly different this way, but so the C go back up to the third uh, to the A to the D. So that, that base movement of the circle of fifths is important. And then we think about the chord qualities. And it's interesting that those um, tones kind of move uh, down in a stepwise motion. Let's see if I get a slightly warmer tone here. Typically, well, the first half it goes to the C major, second half it goes to the E minor kind of right away. Um, but then it follows that same circle of fifths kind of back. So it's, it's um, important to just understand that the, um, the bass movement can move with these very large intervals. And then the... Um, the tones in the chord can uh, move um, in kind of a stepwise motion, generally moving downward, at least most of the time. Uh, so, so let's check out a little bit of, uh, we do a little more playing on this and uh, drop out the keyboards there for a little bit. And uh, so let's think about, we talked about the bass movement. Let's think a little bit about some of those uh, chord, chord movements. So we'll play through some of those.
right, so kind of thinking about those uh, cores there, moving sort of by step, and um, while the base moves uh, sort of um, in, in larger intervals of fourths and uh, fifths. So on guitar, the fourths and fifths are kind of right right in the the, the pattern of it uh, with the intersections between the strings and the frets. So if you go up a fourth, we go on the same fret here. So I'm on fret 10 on the string six going to uh, string five fret 10. Okay, so that's going up a fourth. So up a fourth is the inverse of down a fifth. Okay, so that, that's where we get the circle of fourths, circle of fifths, I kind of think. So here we are going down a fifth from the G to the C. Okay, so one, one thing that you can do to challenge yourself on this is to find the path of the the root notes. You know, see if we can get those. Follow the changes. Okay, and then see if you like we did a minute ago. Uh, see if you can follow trace the pattern of the chords themselves, moving down a uh, little bit at a time by kind of stepwise motion. And then see if you can kind of put those two things together. So you know you can put. We did earlier. Okay, and let's see about maybe adding other other strings and inversions and things. All right. So then, when it comes to a single single line playing, kind of move and um, in various directions. You know, so you can go up go down, move sort of evenly um, in any direction that you'd like to. Um, but then we want to keep in mind of um, trying not to step on others' uh, uh, space or other feet, um, so to speak. So, um, so we might stay away from playing at least a lot of lower notes um, and maybe sticking with some of the, of the higher notes. Let's play through it. All right, so let's do uh, a little more playing. And uh, of course, you could practice doing the uh, circle of fifths on any string combinations. Um, it's also kind of a cool way to find some, some interesting chords and things as well, which maybe we'll talk about after uh, this little playing break here.
Okay, so let's talk about some interesting things that you can kind of do with a circle of fists just to kind of create um, chords or even think about uh, creating melodies. Um, so when, when you take a, take a chord, let's say you take the root note of a chord and you pick a, let's say, fairly high note. So we we'll say this, and we go down. We could go up fifths, okay, but we're gonna go down fourths, okay. So that's sort of the inverse of that. So go down, so we can think of chordal harmony. And what kind of happens is it's really kind of interesting thing is that you can just keep basically going down maybe until you get sharp 11 perhaps um, and then move um, uh, in that direction. So you could take another, another note. You can really take um, any tone. It could be a chord tone. Let's say... Um, Let's say we go down and um, from the third, let's say we do that. So do down a fourth, another fourth. Okay, and then maybe a tritone there. Okay, so. so we end up kind of getting back to our root note. So you can take different segments of this kind of idea. So let's say oh, we start on the fifth of the chord of C major. So there I'm going down. Let's see if we can. Uh, let's take it down, down an octave here. So we have uh, the fifth, nine, six, three, seven. All right. You start going real low at you know, you just have to be cautious, I guess, about what your um, what your environment is. If it's uh, uh, kind of getting that that bass territory of a bassist or another chordal player, so you might not play a real thick chord, but it sounds pretty cool. Okay, so you could take it pretty much any of the um, chord tones and kind of work with that. Um, so let's say. From the seven. Okay. Now you're gonna run into some issues there because you're gonna get to the flat nine. So you can go maybe do it, put a tritone in there, and just so you get some really interesting sounding chords out of that. And you can you can do that on non chord tones too. So start on the nine, and then you could kind of shift things around. Just kind of going with those um, kinds of turn, let me turn down a little bit here. Okay, so we can move all around. Can we come up with different sort of Okay, so a circle of fifths as well. Um, in a sense, so um, another sort of interesting uh, kind of thing thing is to take take it in a in a melodic sense. You could you could definitely play those same things um, as single notes, um, but but kind of the idea behind some of the um, pentatonic type scales are kind of based on uh, stacked fifths um, ascending. So you have like C, G, D, A, E. You kind of compress those notes right, and you get this uh, major pentatonic scale. Um, so it's a really interesting 
kinds of things, and you'll find a lot of tunes to um, to think about with the with the circle of fifths. Everybody, well, thanks again for checking out this uh, this talk. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and um, I will see you all in the in the next one. Have a great practice session.